Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. My name's Edgar Ashman, and I'm what they call the third gardener here at Audley End House. It's a very good position for someone of my age. I'm really proud to be working here, but I've got a lot to learn, especially if I'm going to make it as head gardener. The head gardener here at Audley End, Mr. Vert, insists that I take notes throughout the day for future reference. My diary is also useful for keeping a note of the weather and assessing how different crops respond to the conditions. It also allows for me to compare other gardens I've worked at to Audley End. It also means that if Mr. Vert asks me a question, I'll have an answer for him. Well, I'd better get a move on. Mrs. Crokin, the cook, has asked for some golden noble apples for one of her recipes. She's a wonderfully talented cook. Everyone thinks so. Oh, you should smell her cooking. It's making me hungry just thinking about it. Apples are the staple of any kitchen garden nowadays. And here at Audley End, we grow over 150 types of apple. And across the country, 2,000 types are grown. Competition between gardeners is fierce. And Mr. Vert is very particular about his apples. Like most things in the garden, he's always striving for perfection. And I don't want to let him down. Today, we're going to harvest our golden noble apples which are perfect for cooking. Golden Noble sounds like a very regal name, doesn't it? And they produce large fruits with a sharp, fruity flavour and plenty of juice. They've been grown in this country since around 1820. Oh, look, here comes Mr. Vert now. Good morning, Edgar. How are the apples looking? Very good, sir. So you're harvesting apples yourself today. First time in these gardens, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right then, Edgar. Can you tell me what is the very first thing you need to keep in mind before harvesting apples? I need to assess whether the trees and the bushes are ready for picking. Quite right. And how do you do that? We assess a small number of fruits for their ripeness. I've read up about these apples and they should be ready. They're not an early like a Worcester pear mane or a beauty of Bath, but what happens in the books and what happens in the garden are two very different things. There's a few windfalls here, so that's a good sign. And what do we do with the windfalls? Don't leave them for the wasps, sir. <laughs> if they're edible, but slightly bruised, then they go in for the boffy dinner. If they're too far gone, then we give them to the pigs. Very good. Now back to the apples on the tree. I'm going to twist it gently with an upwards motion to see if it comes off easy. If there's any resistance, then I know it's not ready. And we don't want any blemishes either. <laughs> not unless we know they're going for the servant's pies. Good lad. Remember to pick them at the right time too, so we get the best flavor and the longest storage life. Check and check again for the ones we're storing. Even the slightest bruise can make it rot. And don't forget to take a basket of apples to Mrs. Crocom today. Yes, sir. I hear she's making gâteau de pomme. Gâteau de pomme? Sounds fancy. <laughs> I think it's like an apple marmalade or a fruit cheese. I'm just going to take a look at these apples and see what we've got. These are suitably ready. I'll leave you to it now then, Edgar, and go and check on the glass houses. Yes, sir. Don't take too long. You know Mrs. Crocombe doesn't like to be kept waiting. I need to make sure I do a really good job at this, because as you heard, this is the first time I've harvested the apples here by myself. And Mr. Vert will be keeping a close eye on me to make sure I do a good job. All I need to harvest the apples are my hands and a trug. The apple should come away from the plant from the spur, like this one here. It should come away nice and easy with the stalk still intact. Another good indicator that the apple is ready for harvest is when it takes on a brighter color and when the pips turn from white to brown. You have to handle them gently 
because bruised fruit won't keep and Mrs. Crocombe and Mr. Vert won't be very happy with me. They'll have my guts for garters. Now, I don't want to harvest all of these apples at once. I have to make sure that they're all ready. For example, some apples will become riper quicker than others, especially if the sun is shining on them. Now, I have to keep a close eye on all of the apples to make sure that we don't have brown rot, which is a fungal disease. But everything seems to look good, so I'm going to carry on, because I'm sure Mrs. Crocombe is anxious to get her apples. It's a constant battle between the gardeners and the cooks. It was like my last house, where the head gardener wanted all of the fruits and vegetables to be huge so they could win prizes at the fair. And the cook, she wanted everything to be delicate on the table and full of flavour. It was like a war over the kitchen garden wall. Edgar, have you finished yet? Uh, Mrs. Crocombe needs the apples. I, I, I've got a few trugs, sir. Good lad. The others can go into storage and should keep through the autumn. You'll need to clean up out here too. But first, go to the kitchens and give Mrs. Crocombe the apples. And act sharpish. She is not best pleased. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. I think I was going to have to grow the apples myself. Uh, sorry? Mrs. Crocombe, they're here. Ah, finally! Let me have a look. Picked them myself, Mrs. Crocombe. There won't be a bruise on them. Garden's finest. Hmm, good. They'll be perfect for my gâteau de pomme. I hope there's plenty more in storage. I plan to make a dish that requires whole apples. And for that one, we need all the apples to be the same size. Of course, Mrs. Crocombe. I must be leaving. Mr. Vert's expecting me. I must get on. Good day to you. Good day, Mrs. Crocombe. As Mrs. Crocombe and Mr. Vert asked, I put a selection of apples into storage to preserve them and keep them cool. And now, I'm cleaning up. When we do store the apples, we use a larder or we use one of our garden sheds. So long as it's cool, dark, humid and ventilated, we should be fine. Anyway, it looks like it's starting to rain. So I'm going to make a quick note of all of the things that we've done today in the garden. And then I'm going to call it a day. Now, if there's a specific gardening method you'd like me to show you, why not write me a note below and perhaps Mr. Vert will let me teach you next time. Now I'm sure I'm going to see you again soon, but in the meantime, I think you'll agree, there's more to apple harvesting than you may have thought. <laughs>